Coming up in this FinCast, watch closely as the spots on this coral begin to move. That's not good. Well, I actually have worked with public aquariums for about seven years. Um, I uh, work now in the Florida Keys at several facilities. And then my own personal tanks, I have a five gallon and then a 45 tall. Um, honestly, I'm used to very, very large tanks, like 650,000 tanks. So I'm actually new to these smaller tanks. Um, and my BioCube has been giving me a little bit of issues just because it's, it's a bit of a difference going from treating a large tank to such a tiny thing. And this seems like the perfect product for me. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. I was feeding my corals last night when I discovered I had a big problem. I'd put on my glasses to look for polyp extension in reaction to the feeding when I noticed the spots on my acanthophilia were moving and there were a lot of them. My heart sank. Flatworms. So in the last 24 hours, I've read more about flatworms than you would ever want to know. And I'll put some links to some great articles with the description of this video. But in the meantime, I want to show you what happened when I dipped this coral. I used 30 drops of Coral RX in a gallon of tank water. And I can tell you that I had recently lost another acanthophilia. And... There was a lot of concern for this one. At least now I knew what the problem was and I was hoping that the dip would be the solution. Well, after just a few minutes, hundreds of flatworms fled the coral and I mean hundreds. So I was relieved that the pests were off of this one piece of coral and I hoped that it had a chance to recover as it had been shrinking for about two months. I had no idea why. But now I have a bigger problem because I've got dozens of corals in this 180 gallon tank and it's likely that many of them have similar flatworm infestations. In fact, once I started to look, I did find a few of them on the glass. But first, let me tell you what kind of flatworms that I have because I think that can make a difference in the way you eradicate them. At first, I thought I had something called red planaria, but that turned out not to be the case. I found this great website. Again, there's a link in the description below to lionfishlair.com and they show all the different kinds of hitchhikers that can come into your aquarium on your corals or anything else, live rock, that you might add to your fish tank. And I discovered that what I have, I believe I'm saying this properly, is a type of flatworm called Waminoa. What scientists have found, according to all the reading that I've done, and again, it's been pretty extensive, is that there are a number of ways that these uh, Waminoa can harm your corals. They can suffocate the coral tissue, they feed on the coral mucus, they compete with the coral for feeding, and they also block light from reaching the coral. And I know that this coral in my tank was very unhappy. As I said, I had lost another one just recently. Now, although it seems very obvious here in my case, all these little spots are the flatworms, and it was obviously damaging this coral. For a long time, scientists weren't sure if flatworms harmed the corals or if there might be some sort of symbiotic relationship between the two. Turns out that's not the case. So now we know that dipping the coral works on the individual pieces, but what about the live rock and all the other places that you might find these things? I mean, you can't dip the whole aquarium. It turns out you can add various fish to the tank that eat them, including a six-line wrasse or a four-line. I actually recently did add a four-line just because I wanted it at the time, not knowing it might be part of my solution. So we'll look forward to that in the future. Also, the yellow chorus wrasse is said to eat these. And expert aquarists may want to try a blue velvet nudibranch. I don't think that's an exhaustive list, and I would say you can Google around if you're looking for some other natural solutions, but those are the ones that seem to come up the most often. But it seems like the best way to eradicate flatworms is a product by Salifert called Flatworm Exit. I just ordered some. You run it through your tank and it kills the flatworms and appears to be very effective, but some hobbyists say, well, when they use it, it kills other things in the tank. Either it kills other corals, it affects the fish, and so forth and so on. Well, it turns out it's probably not the flatworm exit, 
But when the flatworms die, they emit toxins. And if you have a lot of them in the tank, the toxins are what kill your other fish. So it's very important to follow those directions and do a water change and begin using activated charcoal, or in my case, Chemipure, one of my sponsors, to start to remove all of those toxins that come from the dead flatworms. Once my flatworm exit arrives, I'll be doing a follow-up video and show you how it works in the tank and see how many more flatworms that maybe are still in the aquarium that weren't on my one particular piece of coral. All right, here we go. In the meantime, I'll keep dipping my corals in Coral RX. It's pretty satisfying to see hundreds of them make the big exit. Bye-bye, flatworms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast. Thank you.